So I want to talk about this beef between Noah Sampson and Think Before You Sleep, two YouTubers. Noah is a bread tuber and he completely embarrassed himself in this situation. And it's double embarrassing because he begged for Think Before You Sleep to respond to him. And when he did, he got humiliated. Today we're going to be looking at a video called Why Woke People Are Making Everything Ugly. It's a video from the channel Think Before You Sleep. That's right, old friend of the show. I made a couple videos about this channel and I'm going to keep doing it because it's I, I have a lot of fun. Well, the fun didn't last that long. And it's a shame because I do like Noah's sense of humor and his delivery. Maybe it's just me but his deadpan sarcasm is just funny to me. The video loosely centers around criticizing an ad campaign from the soap company Dove, which is Dove's real virtual beauty campaign, which focuses on inclusivity and representation for women in video game. Well, thank you, Noah, for summing up the video, so I don't have to. We're bringing real beauty to the virtual world. Does the term beauty even mean anything anymore? Or is everybody just the same regardless of effort? You're all 10 out of 10s in mommy's eyes, Thanks for the participation trophy, Dove. He thinks that these women are not hot. He does not think they're beautiful. They're definitely not 10 out of 10s. So the definition of beauty is here being perverted by Dove. But all of this relies on the assumption that beauty has some objective definition, which is an opinion. An opinion that happens to be very silly, but you know, that's just my opinion. So we got a stalemate there. I really hate this argument because there are different levels of objectivity. If you ask the question, does dog shit smell bad? That's subjective, but it's not completely subjective. There are some objective factors when it comes to attractiveness. I don't want to get too specific as not to make anyone feel bad, but there are biological reasons that we're attracted to certain traits. Wait, this was done with Unreal Engine? Really? Why do all these models look like crappy World of Warcraft avatars from 2006? Dove has hundreds of millions of dollars and this is the best they can come up with for their banner? I mean, there are YouTubers working by themselves on no budget making full AAA quality playable renders with Unreal Engine, while these renders from Dove barely break the PS2 era. So Dove is a bad, lazy company because their graphics are worse than a Zelda animation that a YouTuber made with a fraction of the budget. The key word there is worse because again, that's subjective. This is why this argument is so irritating. We can't even agree that this looks better than this. And again, to use my crude example from earlier, we can't even agree that feces smells bad because hey, it's objective. There are no objective elements to that statement at all. And while something like video game graphics are largely subjective, there is objective elements like resolution, texture quality, lighting and shadows. So first up, Think Before You Sleep makes the argument that Dove is a lazy company because they show a statistic on the screen that he doesn't believe is true. Okay, I don't believe that statistic at all. Where did you get that number? Did you simply ask three of your British friends? Because there is no way that most British women are eternally offended snowflakes who care about that kind of stuff. I tend to agree with him. Keep in mind, this is the UK, where only 7% of British women identify as a feminist. And when asked, what is the first word that popped into their head when they heard the word feminist? The most popular answer was bitchy. So this is the Opinium Women in Gaming survey from early 2021. It was a survey of about 1400 United Kingdom gamers age 18 and over. And one of the key findings here was that 69% of women felt that there needs to be more female characters in video games in general. The two thirds statistic that Dove shows here, that is from this survey. And here you might say, well, Noah, Dove didn't cite where they found that statistic on the screen. So a viewer of the ad would have no idea where to search to confirm its validity. And well, first, Think Before You Sleep is not just a viewer of the ad, he is a YouTube journalist, let's call him, with a big audience that's making a video that critiques this ad. All he had to do was a single Google search with some relevant terms to find this survey. It took me 10 seconds. It's really not that much work, but he didn't do it, which, you know, that's lazy. This is completely lazy. Sorry, I just wanted to use that clip. It's a, it's a great sound effect. I think it's fun. Lazy, 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 lazy. Damn, that confidence. That smugness. How could Noah possibly be wrong? Only if, perhaps, if humiliatingly, the study that Noah found wasn't the study that Dove used. 
I decided that there is no way in hell that Noah got the correct study, so I did what I shouldn't have had to do and checked all of Dove's partnerships from the original article, which led me to this article here from Women in Games. Guess what? It turns out that Opinium did not do the survey. The Opinium Women in Gaming survey, the two-thirds statistic that Dove shows here, that is from this survey. Well, now we know that this is objectively not true. And you're kind of proving his point on the importance of citing your sources. And the funniest part is the smugness with which he claimed, oh, it only took me 10 seconds to find the incorrect fucking survey. It only took me 10 seconds to make myself look like a complete jackass. Congratulations, Noah. Negative body image is also closely linked to multiple different health problems, including things like depression and stress. Depression and stress are linked to weight gain and obesity. Ergo, having a negative body image does not help you lose weight. Oftentimes it's the opposite. It helps you gain weight and it keeps you generally unhealthy. Wait, 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 wait. This struck me as so odd. This seems like a weird amount of jumps. People who are satisfied with their body image are less stressed and less depressed. And stress and depression are linked to weight gain. But you cannot make that leap as there are many factors that go into these things. People who get satisfaction from smoking are happier. Happiness correlates with good health. Therefore, smoking is good for your health. Instead of Frankensteining a couple of studies together, why don't you just find a study that tries to find a connection between body positivity and BMI? And thankfully, that study exists. I'm surprised our dedicated and adept researcher didn't find this on one of his 10 second research rampages. Lazy, 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 lazy. Or maybe he just excluded the logical study to search for because it didn't fit his narrative. The results show no differences overall between the effects of either weight bias or body positivity. Weight bias being described as negative attitudes towards those who are perceived to have surplus body weight. They say weight bias may be detrimental for the treatment of obesity, but it may be more of benefit for its prevention. And you know what they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Anyway, it's an interesting topic, and I'm not saying this is conclusive. I'm just saying that the conclusions drawn by Noah are stupid. Especially when data exists, exist, that shows these claims to be true. And we actually found some of that data. In my video, I cited a survey that corroborated these claims from Dove. But that's not what you claimed. You didn't claim it corroborated that study. You said it was the study. The two thirds statistic that Dove shows here, that is from this survey. He argues that the study is biased because of how they represent the differences in time spent gaming between men and women. So 10 hours of boy gaming versus eight hours of girl gaming. He doesn't think that those are nearly the same because eight is 20% less than 10 and that's too much percents for him. So yes, and he's saying this like it's some ludicrous concept, ignoring that 5% is usually considered statistically significant, let alone 20%. Act as if eight and 10 aren't close numbers is I've never seen such pure, unfiltered, raw Chernobyl levels of cope. I know we've come not to expect much from bread tubers in the form of intellectual arguments, but really eight and 10 are close numbers. That's, that's your argument. Noah just solved climate change, everybody. Why would you be worried about a two degree increase, an increase of two? Why are you pretending those numbers aren't close? What that means is that the women in the study play games on average an hour and 10 minutes per day, whereas the men play on average an hour and 25 minutes per day. That's just 15 extra minutes per day. Again, statistically significant. And it's a very significant chunk of your leisure time. If my boss said I had to work an extra 15 minutes every day, for the same pay, I'd be pretty pissed off. Anyway, it's just good to see another bread tube idiot being destroyed.